Hello and welcome to another episode of Revealing God. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what, it's been a struggle lately, guys. Um, you know, I, I've been planning on doing this episode of uh, relationship versus religion um, because I feel like that's where God is leading me to go next. However, I have been struggling finding actual scripture um, that supports this. And so I'm going to go off of what um, the spirit is telling me and um, basically what I've seen recently. And, um, you know, I'm going to look around at the different um, creatures and relationships in our lives and use that as an example of what I mean. So hopefully um, I can get my point across. And if you guys can think of any scriptures that come to mind or you find anything, please feel free to leave a, a comment in the notes. Um, but uh, so my opinion, and I believe it is correct, otherwise I probably wouldn't be saying this, um, is that uh, God obviously wants our relationship. He values our relationship over any religion. Um, to me, religion it leads to pride. Um, it leads to a self-serving um, type attitude. Um, it, it leads to a feeling of, I have done this because I've obeyed all the rules. Um, you know, and I, I think that um, that's, that's definitely not got what God is interested in, right? Um, I know that Father Abraham, right, or Abraham of the Bible, people refer to him as Father Abraham because he was told he would be the father of multitudes, right? And he was told that not because of his ability to follow all the Jewish laws to a T and whatnot, but it was his special relationship with God that um, gave him favor with God, okay? Um, <clears throat> and so when, when I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking about, okay, so God wants our relationship. So obviously in a good relationship, there has to be open communication. So let me ask you, how often do you talk to God? Um, I know that I don't talk to God near enough. I talk to him every morning, every night, and a few times throughout the day. Um, you know, and it's almost like passing conversation, but how many deep conversations do I have with God, right? And I got to say that, you know, there's not, not too many of them that, I mean, there are times where I'll get into the deep weeds Sorry, my contacts were bothering me today, so I got to go with the glasses. But, um, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's not as many times as I feel like I should, where I really get into the weeds with God and I'm really trying to find what he is looking for. Um, I find myself constantly asking him which direction he wants me to go. You know, I want to hear his voice better. Uh, that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, so let's, let's, let's look at an example um, in our lives that many of us will be familiar with, right? Let's take your child or grandchild. Um, this is something that I heard off of. Um, let's see. Uh, it's the House of Destiny Network. Um, what was the show's name? I know the guy's name is CJ. Uh, he was Kim Clement's bass player. Perspective of, of the Prophet is his show. And he was talking just this morning, I watched it, and he was talking about his grandchild. And he has the type of relationship with his grandchild, um, like I do with my daughter or Lori has with, with our daughter or um, I'm sure you have with your child or grandchild where you know each other on a very um, meaningful, intimate level, right? And matter of fact, he was talking about how 
if the grandchild, and I forget the kid's name, but if the grandchild gets lost in a grocery store or, or like um, a retail store, he could call out the kid's name and the kid would automatically recognize his voice and know that it was his grandpa, right? Same with Hannah. Hannah would hear my voice, recognize automatically that it's my voice. She would hear Lori's voice and automatically recognize it was Lori's voice. Um, and I'm sure the same thing is with your kid or grandkid as well. And, and it's because we have that relationship with our kid. So let's, let's take that and look at it in the God perspective, right? Let's look at it. So how often are we having those conversations where we will recognize God's voice when he's speaking to us, right? And I find myself every morning as a part of my prayers, you know, I'm asking God to allow me to hear his voice better, allow me to know his direction for my life better. And I'm like, but I always feel like something's blocking it, right? Something is blocking it. And um, one of the things CJ said on the, on the show was that praise and worship um, is that connection with God. It's a way to quickly get into that presence of God. And, and as we all know, I mean, God isn't just up in heaven. He's right here in front of us. He's inside of us. He's, he's everywhere. Right. And so you would think that if my God is right here, it shouldn't be that hard to communicate, right? It shouldn't be that hard for me to hear his voice when it's right here, but the distractions of the world come into play. Um, you know, just for example, this, this week, it's been a rough week. The last couple of weeks have been a rough week and, and not, not rough as well. I mean, a few things have gone wrong, but you know, it's, it's just busy, busy. Right. And so, um, and in a good way. So, you know, I had to plant the rest of my orchard. Then I had to finish irrigation for it. And then the well wasn't working properly, which of course, that's one of the things that wasn't going quite right. But, um, but I also stepped up and helped one of uh, Lori's and my friends that she went to school with, with their cattle. And, and so I got to learn all about, um, <clears throat> you know, processing cattle through getting in their uh, vitamin shots and the stuff that prevents flies. And, you know, it's all for their own good. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But, um, you know, so how how is it so difficult for me to talk to this God that's right here and right all around me? And Char Charles, CJ, Charles of the Ritz is what he likes to call himself. He's a cool dude. If you ever get a chance, um, go go to House of Destiny and look for the press. Uh, why can I never say this? It's the uh, perspectives of the prophets or something like that. And um, he used to be Kim Clement's bass player. And he's got this real cool. He, he's a black fella. And He's, he's got this real cool jazzy voice and, he, and just his way of talking it. He's, he's just, he's an amazing guy to watch. I love him. And um, so anyways, he was talking about praise and worship as being that instant access to God. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I love praise and worship. I absolutely love it. But how many times do I actually get into praise and worship, right? How many times do, um, before I pray to God, how many times do I get into praise and worship beforehand? And so that's something I'm going to, I'm going to start implementing in my life. And, uh, I encourage you to as well. Um, and, and just see how it goes. Right. And I'll, I'll update you guys on how it goes, but, um, you know, and I, I'm, I'm expecting that that's going to help me hear God's voice a lot. Right. Through most of my life, God has mostly talked to me through my dreams. Um, one time it was actually audibly and I about 
peed my pants because I wasn't expecting it. And, and uh, anyways, if, if you've read my book, you know what I'm talking about. But, um, you know, most of the time he's he's communicated with me through dreams and he's given me heads up of what's certain things that are going to happen. Of course, it's nothing. It's it's all imperable type things. Right. So it's it's never exactly as it comes. But then looking back, once the event happens, I'm like, that's what God was trying to warn me about, or that's what God was trying to tell me. And uh, so I, I feel like if we just get into his presence before we go into that prayer, before we go into this and that, we'll be able to hear his voice better. Now back to the cattle issue. So let's look at that situation, right? So these cows, so the, the, the cows, they're pretty stubborn. Um, you could tell some of them have been around a while and they kind of, just kind of funnel through and, and they know the routine and others are kind of crazy and, and you got to use a cattle prod on them to get them up because I mean, a cow it's, it's big and it's, it's going to hurt you if it gets out of hand. Right. Um, but they don't necessarily, the shoot's scary. There's a lot of noise going on. Um, and so they don't know exactly what you're doing, right? It takes a certain level of trust that they would have to have in order for them to just blindly follow you. It's the same kind of trust that we need to have in God is that the cattle don't have in us, obviously, right? Because they could be a pain, but um, it was all for their own benefit, right? There was stuff to keep flies and ticks and worms and, and, and vitamins and, and uh, whatever else away. Um, and then the, the calves, they're brand new to all of this stuff. This is their first year that they're going through all this and they have to be tagged and branded so that if they do stray from the flock or from the herd, right, then they could be brought back home, but it's painful. It's scary, you know? Um, but us as humans, we have their best interest in mind. Now, eventually, yeah, they're going to be food, you know, but in the same respect, we want them to be happy and healthy and, and grow up big and, and strong. Right. And so, um, I was, I was kind of, I was helping them just today. And I was thinking about this when I was helping them and I was like, man, this isn't, doesn't this seem like us, how we are with God? Um, sometimes I know several times in my life, things have been pretty scary and they've seemed crazy out of control. Um, and I had no clue what was going on and which direction God was taking me in. Um, but what I did have was I had the knowledge that a God is good. God loves me. B C God only has my best interest at heart. And D God is going to take whatever comes our way and turn it to good. And that as a human gave me comfort knowing, even though it was still painful, even though it was still scary, I still knew that no matter what God was going to pull me through. It's something that these cattle don't actually have. And even though we had their best interest at heart, they still didn't get it. They were freaking out. But anyways, I'm going to have to wrap up, uh, the uh part a here um because i don't want to make it too long otherwise my sister nicole will yell at me for going on and on and on but uh and i believe that laureate is getting dinner ready or supper as they say here in kansas but um anyways let's let's end with a prayer and uh, we'll get this over with lord we thank you so much for the today, God. And uh, Lord, in particular, I want to be able to thank you for um, having the ability to help my friends and neighbors in the area, God. Um, you know, I don't really expect anything in return. Um, it's a neighbor helps neighbor type situation, God. And, um, but it was, it was a great experience to get to understand the industry and to know what a rancher goes through and just a small part of it. It was, it was fascinating to me. So I want to thank you for that opportunity, God. And Lord, just like many things that you do in our lives, you taught me a lesson that was totally unexpected while I was working there today. 
And it was the relationship between you and me, God, and you and your people, Lord, and how we need to sit back and rest in that comfort that you have our best interest in at heart, God, even though times are scary and things may be painful and we don't understand what's going on, God, help us to have the confidence in knowing that you are with us. And if you are with us, God, who can be against us? And so, Lord, I pray for every person watching uh, here today, God, and I ask that you give us all um, that comfort in knowing you. I pray that you help us hear you better, God, and understand you better, um, which is another thing that that is necessary in hearing your voice. Is it's one thing to hear your voice, God, but it's another thing in understanding what you're trying to say. And sometimes that could be difficult, God. So please plain, speak plainly and, and simply to us as if we are children, Lord, so that we have a full understanding of what you are trying to tell us, Lord. And I pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, sorry it took me so long. Like I said, things have been super crazy busy here. Um, and I have been tired, but I wanted to make sure to get this in there. So love you all. God bless you. Have a good night.